on the divine supreme in our heart for the welfare of all beings in the universe shanti shanti peace 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 be unto all om sthapakaya ca dharmasya sarva dharma swarupine sthapakaya ca dharmasya sarva dharma swarupine avatar varishtha ram krishna te nama asato ma sadgamaya tamaso ma jyotirgamaya mrutyo let us offer our salutations to shri ramakrishna the embodiment of all religions who established religion on the right track who is the incarnation supreme let us pray to the divine supreme being to lead us from darkness of ignorance to the light of knowledge from unreal to the real from death to immortality let us be freed from all afflictions troubles sufferings in the life and experience tranquility peace and joy <coughs> om bhadram karne vishnu yama deva bhadram pasye maksha virya jatra tirai rangai istushto vagum sastano bhihi व्यषेमेवितुस्तिनगिंद्रो वृद्ध्रवा स्वस्ति नूषा विश्वेदा स्वस्ति नस्ताक्ष्यो अरिष्टने स्वस्ति नो बृहस्पतिर्दू ओ शातिशाशा hari hi om <clears throat> let us hear through our ears what is auspicious let us see through our eyes what is auspicious may we enjoy the life allotted to us leading a righteous life let all the gods best of prosperity on us and remove all obstructions on our way let them grant peace to one and all let us now chant the amrita bindu upanishad मनोहिद प्रोक्त शुद्ध चाशुद्धमे चशुद्ध काम सकल्प शुद्ध काम विवर्जि मन एव मनुष्याण कारण बंधमोक्ष बंधा विषयासक्त मुक्त निर्विषय स्मृत यतो निर्विषय से मनसो मुक्तिष्य अतो निर्विषय निमुक्षुण निरस्त विषयासंगम सन्नी मनोहृदी 
ಸ್ವರೇಣಸಂಧೇಜ್ಞಾತ್ವಾಮಸಂಪದ್ಯೇಧ್ರುವಂಪಮನಂತಂಚ ಯಜ್ಞಾತ್ವಾಮುಚ್ಯತೆ ಬುಧ ನ ನಿರೋಧೋ ನ ಚೋತ್ಪತ್ತಿರ್ನಬ್ಧೋ ನ ಸಾಧಕ ನ ಮುಕ್ಷುರ್ನ ವೈ ಮುಕ್ತ ಪರಮಾರ್ಥತೇವಾತ್ಮಂತೌಯೋ ಜಾಗೃತ್ ಸ್ವಪ್ನ ಸುಷುಪ್ತಿಷು ಸ್ಥಾನತ್ರಯವ್ಯತೀತ ಪುನರ್ಜನ್ಮನ ವಿದ್ಯತೆ ಹಿ ಭೂತಾತ್ಮ ಭೂತೆ ಭೂತೆ ವ್ಯವಸ್ಥಿತ ಬಹುಧೃಶ್ಯತೆ ಜಲಚಂದ್ರವತ್ ಘಟಸಂವ್ರತಮಾಕಾಶೀಯಮೇ ಘಟೆ ಯಥ ಘಟೋನೀಯೇತನಾಕಾಶಂ ತೀವೋ ನೋಪಮ ಘಟವಿಧಾಕಾರಿದ್ಯಮನ ಪುನಃ ಪುನಃ ತದ್ಭಗ್ನ ಚಾತಿ ಸಾತಿ ಚಿತ್ಯಶ ಶಬ್ದಮೃತೋನ ತಮಸಾತಿ ಪುಷ್ಕರೆ ಭಿನ್ನೇ ತಮಸಿ ಚೈಕತ್ವಕ್ಯತಿ ಶಬ್ದಾಕ್ಷರ ಪರಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ತಸ್ಮಿನ್ ಕ್ಷೀಣೆ ಯದಕ್ಷರ ತದ್ವಿದ್ವಾನಕ್ಷರ ಧ್ಯಾಚ್ಛೇಚ್ಛಾಂತಿ ಮಾತ್ಮನ ದ್ವೇ ವೇದಿತ್ರಹ್ಮ ಪರಂಚಯತ್ ಶಬ್ದಬ್ರಹ್ಮಣಿ ನಿಷ್ಣಾತ ಪರಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಾಧಿಗತಿ ಗ್ರಂಥಮಭ್ಯಸ್ಯ ಮೇಧಾವಿ ಜ್ಞಾನ ವಿಜ್ಞಾನ ತತ್ಪರ ಪಲಾಲಮಿವಧಾನ್ಯಾರ್ಥಿ ತ್ಯಜೇತ್ಗ್ರಂಥಮಶೇಷತ ಗವಾಮನೇಕವರ್ಣ ಕ್ಷೀರಸ್ಯಾಪ್ಯೇಕವರ್ಣತ ಕ್ಷೀರವತ್ ಪಶ್ಯತೆ ಜ್ಞಾನ ಲಿಂಗಿನಸ್ತು ಗವಾಂಗ್ಯಥ ಘೃತಮಿವ ಪಯಸಿ ನಿಗೂಢಂ ಭೂತೆ ಭೂತೆ ವಸತಿ ವಿಜ್ಞಾನ ಸತತ ಮಂಥಯಿತವ್ಯ ಮನಸ ಮಂಥಾನಭೂತೇನ ಜ್ಞಾನನೇತ್ರ ಸಾಯ ಉದ್ಧರೇದ್ವನ್ನಿವತ್ಪರ ನಿಷ್ಕಲಂ ನಿಶ್ಚಲ ಶಾಂತ ತದ್ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಿ ಸ್ಮೃತ ಸರ್ವೂತಾಧಿವಾಸಯ ಭೂತು ಚ ವಸತ್ಯಪಿ ಸರ್ವಾನುಗ್ರಾಹಕತ್ವೇನ ತದಸ್ಮ್ಯಹಂ ವಾಸುದೇವಸ್ತದಸ್ಮ್ಯಹಂ 
ವಾಸುದೇವ ಇದಿ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತ ಶಾಂತ ಶಾಂತಿ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕಸ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಪ್ರೀವಿಯಸ್ ಕ್ಲಾಸ್ ದ ಪ್ರೀವಿಯಸ್ ವರ್ಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ಟಲ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ವೆನ್ ದಿ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಲೂಸಸ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಅಟ್ಯಾಚ್ಮೆಂಟ್ to the objects of the senses that is when the attachment is annihilated that mind would be able to merge itself in the supreme consciousness how it is done something should be initiated mind by itself cannot proceed onwards even when we are in deep sleep the mind is considered for the time being without any desires so we have a very good experience of the deep sleep because the mind was its in tranquil condition but then as soon as we wake up immediately we are in troubles but then here the upanishad tells when the mind is consciously withdrawn from the attachment of the objects of the senses then it should be set into motion towards realizing the supreme consciousness there are people who work 14 hours or 20 hours a day in the world if they are able to spend at least 5 hours a day for spiritual practice they could be liberated in the very life what is described as jivan mukta one could attain that state provided one devotes 5 hours or 6 hours a day in contemplating the divine being so the upanishad tells here in what way it should be done tavadeva niroddhavyam yavad hridi gatam kshayam etat jnanancha dhyanancha shesho nyayascha vistaraha here it is made very clear the mind of course should be well controlled well it should be controlled and directed in such a way it gets dissolved in the heart this is jnana realization and this is meditation also the rest is argumentation and superfluity of words let us try to understand this verse step by step control of mind makes easy to concentrate so control of mind and concentration lead us towards the experience of the paramatman who is residing in our own being in the chamber of our heart that is the final goal i have said in the previous class that man suffers bondage and other ills in life because of his great error in the mistaken identification with body and senses the senses are controlled by the mind mind is controlled by the intellect finally the states of both the mind and intellect are under the observation of the inner seer 
in himself. So, there is an inner seer greater than the senses, mind and intellect. This analysis makes him conscious of a new element in him which is in a sense greater than all other elements of which he is conscious. Now, he begins his attempt to understand clearly the inner seer in himself. His mind cannot tackle this job unless it is taken off the senses and fully and completely turned towards the investigation of the seer. He determines then not to be the slave of his senses anymore. He beats a retreat from the previous habit of pampering and petting his senses. This constitutes the control of the mind. Then follows contemplation. It's very important. The control of mind makes us fit for the next stage to go forward. That is initiated by contemplation. Divine experience is the supreme aim of life and contemplation is the supreme way to attain it. So we can know the importance of contemplation. Practice of contemplation keeps the mind unaffected by pain as well as pleasure. Contemplation is like medicine for fever. Fever, you know, makes the tongue bitter. The bitter taste does not go by sweetening the tongue with sugar. Medicine must stop the fever, which is the root cause of the bitter taste. In the same way, ignorance of Paramatman makes one suffer in life. Suffering does not go by social, political or economic remedies which are all superficial. It is only contemplation that removes human suffering by removing the root cause, namely ignorance of Paramatman and one's own self. Man knows the right but follows the wrong because he forgets the right under the attack of impulse. Contemplation is the way to bring impulse under control. The way of God and the way of the world run in opposite directions. You can't have both the enjoyment of the world and the experience of God at the same time. It is moving upstream in the river of life. The aspirant stays in the stream but is not carried away by it. Contemplation leads one into the innermost chamber of God. 
The aspirant should keep his mind fastened to contemplation as far as possible. If the mind is too much extrovert, if the mind runs after the objects of the senses recklessly, it is impossible to think of contemplation. If the mind is let loose for any reason, it dashes headlong into the carnal desires. Every situation in life must become for the aspirant an occasion to make an advance in contemplation. Worldly thoughts rob us of our inward comfort. Contemplation of God is the ever watchful sentinel who kills those thoughts and saves us. It ought to pervade our life in the world just as consciousness pervades the body. Contemplation alone has intrinsic value in human life. Now, what is this worldly life? This worldly life is like a stage. An actor in this stage is a different man in real life. He may play the part either of a king or of a beggar on the stage. It has extrinsic value in real life. So also, wealth and poverty possess an extrinsic value in spiritual life. A poor man in contemplation of God is superior to a rich man without it. Contemplation involves complete concentration of mind. Then follows deep meditation. I am Atma Brahma. This self e or Atman which activates you is the same Brahman which vitalizes the entire universe. That's what the Upanishads declare. We need not go anywhere in search of God. It is here alone inside our chamber, inside our heart. He is resplendent, effulgent, shining in all glory and he is ever present. Only we have to find it out through contemplation and meditation. In deep meditation, mind gets merged in the heart, the seat of pure consciousness discovering this self is Brahman, experiencing the identity between yourself and the all-pervading reality. Is it possible to have such highest experience? Yes, it is not simply imagination or a concocted story, no. Upanishads are direct revelations. The rishis have experienced them and given out those truths for the welfare of humanity so that the human race can rise to the highest level of peace and tranquility. There are holy people who have realized this highest experience of total identification with all pervading Brahman consciousness. In case of ordinary spiritual persons, <clears throat> once their mind gets merged in supreme consciousness, they attain samadhi from which they no more return to their body-mind equipment. They don't feel the necessity of coming back. They get full satisfaction in the experience of the highest 
సుప్రీం పరమాత్మ దే వుడ్ ఎంజాయ్ పర్పెచువల్ బ్లిస్ అండ్ ఎంజాయ్ అబ్జల్యూట్ ఫ్రీడమ్ వెల్ ఇన్ ఆర్డర్ టు షో ది ప్యాచ్ టు దట్ హైయెస్ట్ స్టేట్ అండ్ గివ్ ఇన్స్పిరేషన్ అండ్ గైడెన్స్ టు ద పీపుల్ హు ఆర్ స్ట్రగ్లింగ్ ఇన్ లైఫ్ some great illumined souls come back to their mortal frame the sages the incarnations are showing the path of light they are holding the light showing the pathway to the supreme being we have to march on that much we should do we must step forward then we will able to experience that once shri ram krishna was looking with deep concentration on the newly grown tender grass at a particular spot of the garden of the dakshineshwar kali temple the whole area was looking so beautiful with the tender grass shri ramakrishna transcended the normal consciousness and was feeling identified with that spot at that moment somebody walked over the grass while crossing the master became very restless feeling unbearable pain in his chest as if somebody trampled on his chest in that highest mood some boatmen were quarreling there over some matter after some time one of them gave a severe slap on the back of the other the master immediately cried out suddenly with pain his nephew came out from the kshneshwar kali temple he literally ran towards the master and found the master's back had become red and swollen this is the experience of the identification with the creation so it is possible to rise to that highest level if we study these lives they give inspiration for us so we can attain this highest realization through concentration and meditation when the mind is in good control now when the mind is completely free from all sorts of desires distracting thoughts then it is ready for the direction now contemplation should be initiated contemplating on the divine being the supreme parmatman the all pervading consciousness then that contemplation leads to meditation what is meditation many people ask about the definition of meditation meditation is that state of the mind where in there are no sensual thoughts in sanskrit it is defined as dhyanam nirvishayam manaha it is also defined as a continuous flow of perception or thought tatra pratyayekatanata there is a continuous current in the mind of one ob- object like the flow of water in a river there is only one particular state in the mind it is ekarupavritti pravaha 
meditation is the keeping up of an unceasing flow of god consciousness it is a flow of continuous thought of one thing or god or atman like the continuous flow of oil taila dharavat all worldly thoughts are shut out from the mind the mind is saturated with divine thoughts divine glory and divine presence meditation is the regular flow of thought with regard to the object of concentration meditation follows concentration meditation is the seventh step in the ladder of yoga when meditation is done steadily it leads to samadhi it results in samadhi super conscious state or blissful union with the supreme self that is the atman merges in paramatman swami vivekananda describes this phenomenon in his famous song of sanyasin there he says the i has all become the all is i and bliss no thou art that sanyas in bold say om tat sat om lord jesus says empty thyself and i shall fill thee what a fine statement in yoga patanjali says the same thing yoga chitta vritti nirodaha yoga is restraint or annihilation of all mental modifications or functions in mundaka upanishad the process of meditation is beautifully given through which one attains the highest experience of reality it is worth noting that famous verse pranavo dhanu sharo hyatma brahma tallakshya muchyate apramatte na vedhavyam sharavat tanmayo bhavet let the infinite brahman be your target now this is a process of meditation given to a spiritual aspirant whose mind is perfectly under control who is well established in contemplation and who is now ready to take lessons on meditation so now step by step the rishi leads us towards the process of meditation let the infinite brahman be your target shoot at it with the arrow of your mind let the bow from which we are shooting be the syllable you are uttering do not let the arrows miss the target by being in attentive when you practice thus your aim becomes better and the arrows go and strike the target so also your mind will go to the brahman and merge with it giving the highest experience the merging of the mind in the paramatman gives the maximum happiness you may not succeed in maintaining the one thought perfectly at the beginning there are so many impressions unconsciously left on the mind by past good or bad actions 
which therefore produce pleasure or pain stored up in our minds as goods are stored in godowns that their force will make itself felt at first well let us know what it is then we can face them the mind will run about again and again and will be refuse it will refuse to be tied down to the single thought it goes out because of raga dvesha and bhaya that is it goes out because of attraction repulsion and fear these are the three major factors responsible for dragging the mind away from concentration we should remove them first to make concentration meditation successful how raga dvesha and bhaya that is attraction repulsion and fear will be there as long as there is an object we desire an object which we are repulsed from an object or incident which we fear etc when we dwell upon the ultimate reality more and more and since this consciousness doesn't allow of any duality in it the attraction and repulsion we have for the world will go away little by little attraction and repulsion we have only because of the dualistic understanding in the mind so as we dwell on the one ultimate reality which is the i consciousness atman in us the dualistic understanding and consequently the attraction and repulsion will fade away we should go on meditating in this way by dwelling on the one single thought what is that i am atma brahma this atman is verily that brahman we must meditate twice or thrice for one hour at least at a stretch in a day morning evening and night we must sit and meditate positively knowing that we must realize because it is difficult at the beginning for the mind to turn inward so many thoughts come and trouble us the force of impressions accumulated in a million births is there to kill the mountainous bulk of impressions is difficult we can only blast it little by little by the dynamite of i am atma brahma this atman is brahman we must be dynamic in assertion in our assertion so we should not get depressed if our mind strays here and there away from the one single thought slowly our mind gets calmer and calmer the on rush of thoughts decreases we just ignore the other thoughts even though they may come up we are in all sorts of troubles and disturbances only because of our dualistic understanding namely there is something apart from us separate and different from us this dualistic understanding must go away that is what the upanishad is trying to impress upon us upanishad deals with our inner nature dualistic understanding does not mean god is separate and i am separate but it means there is something in the world apart from me to remove this misunderstanding we should constantly dwell on that one unitary consciousness the pure consciousness 
with the deep feeling it is all one and that is i it removes the dualistic feeling in us and attraction and repulsion and fear go away little by little as husk from the paddy once the husk has been removed even if you put the husk and paddy together they will not unite so also once the dualistic understanding is removed even if we live in the world of multiplicity it does not affect us our mind will be pure calm and free that is the test of realization you see the illumined souls holy people always cheerful unnerved by anything of this world the mind which weighs heavily on us before becomes light now its issuing forth tendency decreases it dwells more easily and constantly on the constant contemplation keeping up meditation with determination in the initial stages is very necessary and essential because if we once lapse then we will never take it up seriously again we will thus be staying on in our intellection stage without reaching the target it is like throwing off the kernel and preserving the shell what is the use of mere intellection without activity actively striving for liberation that is what is explained in the second half of the verse other than concentration and meditation mere argumentation and verbiage are useless your capacity to explain beautifully the holy scriptures your capacity to utter so many difficult passages and charm the people your capacity to give different shades of meaning all these skills may enthrall the audience and you may well be recognized as an outstanding scholar that would not ensure you real peace and bliss and freedom so do not stop at the intellection stage but fulfill it by meditation that's the point do not be careless and forget to meditate so here the stress is laid on meditation once a learned man a pandit came to stay with a holy man he saw the holy man explaining profound truths of the happiness in a simple and homely style one day scholar you know they always want to talk so he questioned the holy man sir i have closely studied the works of the saints some of the saints were unlearned almost illiterate <laughs> how is it then that their works contain the highest type of vedanta that's the question asked by this man with a gentle smile the holy man replied my dear scholar learning and wisdom are not the same saints possess wisdom <coughs> they are inwardly united with the supreme parmatman such union results in universal knowledge about life and its problems an unlearned saint may not be able to tell you the meaning of verses from the upanishads and other holy scriptures but what he speaks about life and god and soul must be found in those works his knowledge is like a fresh spring its origin is in divine experience life experiences teach man more than books and sermons scholars pandits possess more information about the experiences of saints than the saints themselves 
one must attempt to live that life himself so the importance is given in this verse that the controlled mind should be engaged in proper contemplation concentrating on one single thought continuously for a long time trying to discard all dualistic attitudes trying to feel one with the universal consciousness that way we would be able to realize the highest state where the mind gets dissolved once the mind gets dissolved there is no more misery no more reaction no more ups and downs no more suffering always the being will be enjoying the perpetual peace and happiness thank you all